Victorian Conservatory Installation Guide Sill Installation 1. Base Sill Installation Once you're confident that the base level and dimensions are accurate, place a spirit level against the inside of the external brickwork and draw a line alongside the inside edge of the spirit level. Refer to your base plan diagram and lay all the sill pieces onto the base. The inside face of the sill should be positioned against this line and onto the base. At this stage, it's important to assure the sill is level, in the correct position, and using your roof plan, which is attached to the checklist images in box A, check that the internal sill measurements are correct. 2. Sill connectors Join the sill sections with the appropriate sill connectors and assure that these are silicone sealed on all contact areas. Fit the sill's connectors to the sill using the screws provided. Measure the gap left for the doors and cut the sill to size with a saw so that it overhangs the brickwork for the door by 2 mm on each side. A separate length of 150 mm sill is supplied to fit between the dwarf walls. 3. Fixing Sill See your installation guide to view the key measurement checks. Once you're happy that this is accurate, drill through the sill and into the base to a depth of at least 100 mm. Permanently fix through the sill using the fixing bolts. These should be positioned 100 mm from each end of the sill and equally spaced. Fitting first windows. Note the wall connector supplied might be different to the one showing. Please refer to your installation guide. 1. Fitting panels Locate the wall plate and connectors and mark out the position of the relevant fixing bolts. The first and last 60mm fixing bolt should be positioned 50mm from the top and bottom faces of the wall connector, with the rest being spaced equally between. A total of three fixing bolts are used per wall connector on a dwarf wall model and five per connector on a full height model. If any of the positions marked for the 60mm fixing bolts land on mortar joints, adjust the position accordingly so that they locate over solid brick. Position the wall connector so that the internal edge is in line with the margin on the wall drawn earlier. It is important to ensure that the connector is at an angle of 90 degrees to the base. Use timber packing if required. Pre-drill the holes with an 8mm drill. While holding the connector in position and ensuring that it rests onto the sill, pre-drill through the connector and into the brick using an 8mm masonry drill. You're now ready to fix the connector with fixing bolts. Repeat this on the opposite side of the conservatory. Some fixings shown in this DVD are for studio build only. Please refer to your installation guide for the correct fixings required. 2. Fitting first panels. Select the panel to fit against the property wall. Ensure that the drainage slots in every panel are located at the bottom of the panel and facing the outside of the conservatory. You'll notice that each panel corner has the inner legs on the panel detailed, notched away. It's essential that this detail is present to ensure that all 18mm inline couplings can slide into position. Two sill support blocks should also be attached to each panel. If they're not, please refer to your instruction manual. Position the window close to the wall connector. The legs of the sill support blocks should line up with the channel of the sill. Push or tap the window firmly downwards to clip into place. The base of the window should sit firmly down onto the sill. Check your installation guide for an alternative method. Select the A129 wall plate adapter and two A128 wall plate connectors. Slide the adapter and connector downwards so it's held by the window's inner legs until it rests onto the sill. Slide the window and connectors along the sill to engage the legs of the connectors with the legs of the wall plate. Quarter turn buttons should now be positioned between the panel and the wall connector, around 50mm from the top and bottom.
Using a 6mm Allen key, rotate the quarter turn button 90 degrees clockwise to lock it into position. Six quarter turn buttons are attached to each face on dwarf wall models, eight for full height models. Silicone should be applied to the sill where the two part connector has made contact. Repeat for the opposite window. Fitting windows in a straight run. 1. Fitting intermediate panels. Select the second panel and again remember to ensure the drainage slots are located at the bottom of the panel and facing the front. Fit the panel in the same way as you did the first and bring it into position around 18mm away from the last panel to be installed. An 18mm inline coupling should then be slid downward and through the gap between the two panels until it rests on the sill. Use the quarter turn buttons to secure the panels in place. A quick check of the distance between the two panels should show a distance of 18mm. The same process is applied to the installation of all other panels and 18mm inline couplings. 2. Adjustable connectors after every third 18mm inline coupler, a longer run of connected panels, an adjustable inline coupling is required. These allow for adjustment to ensure that the panels will finish in the correct position when connecting to a corner post or a wall connector. For further detailed instructions on the adjustable inline couplings, please refer to the installation guide. 135 degree post. The 135 degree posts are positioned around the angled faces. The windows, either side of the post, should be positioned so that the external corners are approximately 75 mm apart. Slide the post from above. The large angled face section of the 135 degree corner post is positioned at the outer corner of the sill. Ensure that the leg detail of the post interlocks with that of the windows. Quarter turn buttons are positioned in the gap between the panels and the 135 degree corner post. Quarter turn buttons are also required on the adjacent outer corner in the same positions. It's then recommended that a thin bead of silicone is run where the panels meet on the inside of the con Eaves beam installation. We recommend at this point that you recheck the internal dimensions, width and projection and check the measurements across the internal corners, which should be the same. Silicone seal the gaps between the front of the eaves beam external trim and the front of the windows to create a watertight seal. Position the eaves beam centrally on top of the windows. The inside face of the overhang will sit against the front face of the panels and the end of the eaves beam will be flush with the outer face of the side panels. The eaves beam pieces will also require joining at the corners. They're joined by using two eaves beam joiners which slot together and slide into the channels on the inside of the eaves beam. Apply a bead of silicone to the cut faces of the eaves beam prior to joining. Fix the eaves beam joiners into position with the 38mm silver screws through the pre-drilled holes. Once assembled on top of the panels, drill through the eaves beam only using a long-reach 5mm drill 100mm from the edge of each window. The first holes from the end of the eaves beam should be at 100mm to ensure it's fastened into the window. Power drive the fixing screws through the holes in the eaves beam and into the head of the window. Ridge installation. Temporarily support the ridge assembly in the correct position. Start the ridge assembly by attaching the Victorian hip bars to the boss end. Slot the holes in the top of the spar over the M5 by 25mm bolts in the ridge. Slot the holes at the bottom of the Victorian hip bar over the M5 bolts located in the bolt retainers that sit either side of the eaves beam corner. Loosely screw on the M5 locking nuts without tightening. Repeat on the other side. Attach the first starter bar over the single bolt retainer in the eaves beam. Locate the holes in the top of the starter spar over the M5 by 25mm bolt in the ridge. 
loosely screw on the M5 locking nuts without tightening. Use your installation guide to carry out checks. Drill and fix the wall bars using fixings positioned 150 mm from each end and no more than 600 mm apart, avoiding mortar beds. Some fixings shown in this DVD are for studio build only. Please refer to your installation guide for the correct fixings required. Glazing bar installation. The transom glazing bars need to be installed next. Start with any glazing bars that connect to the ridge. After removing the protective film from the glazing bar undercladding, slot the transom glazing bar holes over the bolts in the double bolt retainers located in the ridge. Repeat for the holes at the bottom of the glazing bars which connect to the bolt retainers located in the eaves beam. Loosely th tie bar installation. The lugs will be attached to the bottom of the relevant glazing bars where the tie bar is to be positioned. Three lengths of threaded tie bar rod and three lengths of conduit to cover the rod are supplied with each three-way tie bar. First, screw an M10 fixing nut onto the threaded bar. Insert the threaded bar through the pre-drilled hole in the ridge centre. At this stage, it's a good time to fit the ridge undercladding with the tie bar rod fitted in place. Thread the vertical tie bar conduit over the threaded bar and insert into the hole in the internal ridge cover. As the lug is already attached to the glazing bar, screw the horizontal threaded tie bar rod into the clevis. Once the rod has been attached to the clevis, the clevis can be fixed to the lug with the M10 nut and bolt. Attach both tie bar rods on the left and right sides of the conservatory in this way. With the vertical tie bar rod and the two horizontal tie bar rods in place, raise them all together towards the centre and thread the ends of the tie bar rods through the holes in the three-way tie bar centre boss. Check the horizontal tie bar rods for level before tightening the M10 tie bar center boss locking nuts fully. Ridge capping. Fold the universal foam bung into a semicircle, ensuring the ends are tucked towards the center. Place into the void on the boss end so that the outer face rests against the end of the glazing bars. Using the silicone provided, run a continuous bead around the joint between the foam bung and the glazing bar top caps. Fitting the ridge cover. When fitting the ridge cover, first slot the holding down bolts into the groove on the underneath of the external ridge capping. Then attach the boss end foam trim around the perimeter of the underside of the boss end cover. Remove the adhesive tape and press firmly onto the underside of the capping. Slide the finial fully onto the ridge capping as far as it'll go. Slide the pieces of cresting into the open-ended channel of the external ridge cover. The last piece of cresting may have to be trimmed. See your installation guide for instructions. Lift the ridge capping assembly onto the top of the ridge assembly and push down so that it locates on the prongs of the ridge centre. Slide the rectangular washer up the holding down bolts until it touches the ridge wings and finger tighten the nylon nut onto the holding down bolts to make the external ridge capping secure. Primary seal to host wall. Self-adhesive flashing tape is included in your conservatory kit. The tape is provided as a means of temporarily sealing the conservatory from water ingress. Cut the flashing tape and apply the flashing tape to the host wall. The flashing tape should run down three courses of brick and run into the drainage channel. Although the flashing tape, if applied in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions, can function for many years, it's not a long-term substitute for traditional lead flashing. We would recommend that you employ an experienced builder to carry out lead flashing works during the construction of your conservatory or at some time in the near future.
Roof Glazing Installation If your glazing material is polycarbonate, it's important to note that the surface, which is protected by the printed polythene film, is the surface that is on the outside of the conservatory. Each roof glazing sheet is labelled with the corresponding number on your roof plan. Please note that if your conservatory roof has glass roof glazing sheets, some may require jointing with muntin bars. See the muntin bars section for instructions on how to install, as well as the back of the installation guide. When fitting the ridge cover, first slot the holding down bolts into the groove on the underneath of the external ridge capping. Prior to the installation of the finial, it may be required to trim the underside to fit. Slide the finial fully onto the ridge capping, leaving space for the ridge end cap to be attached. Slide the pieces of cresting onto the external ridge cover through the moulded grooves from the opposite end of the external ridge cover. The last piece of cresting may have to be trimmed. See your installation guide for instructions. Run a bead of silicone around the contact faces of the flashing trim and attach to the ridge assembly. Lift the ridge capping assembly onto the top of the ridge assembly and push down so that it locates on the prongs of the ridge center. Screw the rectangular washer until it touches the ridge wings and finger tighten, holding down the bolts to make the external ridge capping secure. Primary seal to host wall. Self-adhesive flashing tape is included in your conservatory kit. This product is suitable for use where the host wall is flat and even, for example, face brickwork. The tape is provided as a means of temporarily sealing the conservatory from water ingress. Although the flashing tape, if applied in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions, can function for many years, it's not a long-term substitute for traditional lead flashing. We would recommend that you employ an experienced builder to carry out lead flashing works during the construction of your conservatory or at some time in the near future. Roof Glazing Installation If your glazing material is polycarbonate, it's important to note that the surface, which is protected by the printed polythene film, is the surface that is on the outside of the conservatory. Each roof glazing sheet is labelled with the corresponding number on your roof plan. Please note that if your conservatory roof has glass roof glazing sheets, some may require jointing with muntin bars. See the muntin bars section for instructions on how to install, as well as the back of the installation guide. Although the glazing end trims may already be fitted on the polycarbonate glazing sheets, they will have to be removed to allow the application of a bead of silicone along the top face of the breather tape, where it will come into contact with the glazing end trim. Reattach the end trim once application is complete. Select the first roof glazing sheet and remove its protective outer film. It is recommended that only a 100mm perimeter of the inner protective film is removed at this stage of conservatory installation, as this will help protect the roof glazing sheet from any unnecessary damage. The inner protective film can be completely removed once all plaster work is complete. Start with the roof glazing sheets against the wall and to the left with the face that had the printed film facing outwards. This first sheet will be labelled as G1. Prior to fitting the roof glazing sheets, it's recommended to peel back around 50mm to 100mm of the glazing tape protective film. This enables adjustments to be made to the position of the roof glazing sheets without permanently sticking the entire roof glazing sheet to the eaves beam closure. Push the roof glazing sheet up into the universal ridge wings, then slowly allow it to slide back down away from the ridge until it rests flush with the bottom of the transom glazing bars. Allow the roof glazing sheet to gently rest onto the eaves beam closure. We recommend initially installing the glazing sheets clockwise around your conservatory. Once two adjacent glazing sheets are installed, fit the glazing bar top cap. They will permanently keep the roof glazing sheets in place and create a watertight seal. Fitting glazing bar caps. Select the appropriate glazing bar top cap by matching its number with the corresponding glazing bar number. 
Prior to installing the glazing bar top caps, the top cap rubber gasket must be lubricated with a solution of mild soapy water or a silicone spray. This will allow the top cap to spread more easily during installation. Use a glazing mallet or similar plastic surfaced mallet to knock on the glazing bar top caps, starting at the top and working down the glazing bar towards the eaves beam. When the glazing bar top cap is attached, ensure that the bottom face of the top cap is aligned with the bottom face of the glazing bar. Remove the protective film from the glazing bar top cap. Now, fit the remainder of the roof glazing sheets and glazing bar caps in the same way as previously described. Fitting glazing bar end cap. When the glazing bar top caps are attached, you need to close the end of the glazing bar with the glazing bar end cap. The glazing bar end cap is attached to the glazing bar by two 3.9 by 19 mm yellow screws. Sit the lip of the end cap over the top cap and locate the top screw through one of the plastic washers supplied and into the port in the glazing bar. Use the hole in the end cap that aligns with the bottom screw port to locate the second screw. Ensure that the screw cover caps supplied are used to hide the screws once in position. Guttering installation. OG gutter support bracket should be positioned 150 mm from each corner and the remainder equally spaced. To fit the brackets, place the top of the bracket into the groove on the eaves beam. Pull the bracket downwards until it locks into place. Hang the front edge of the gutter onto the bracket and rotate up the back of the bracket as shown. Fit only to the first click. Don't push all the way up. Where there are stop ends or outlets on the gutter, you'll need gutter joint clips to fix these in place. Position the gutter joint clips over the gutter Slide up the back of the gutter until the hooks engage over the gutter. Pull up the front of the joints and clip over the gutter. Once the clips are in place, you can push the gutter up into its final position. With the gutter and clips in place, you can now fit the downpipes and brackets. You'll need to cut the round downpipe into two lengths and join them together by use of the downpipe bends to allow the round downpipe to sweep over the sill and down the dwarf wall to the ground. The cut in the round downpipe is to produce two lengths that suit the height of the window frames and the dwarf wall. Push fit the downpipe onto the spigot of the stop end outlet. Connect the downpipe shoe to the base of the downpipe. Fix the downpipe in position by use of the downpipe retention clips. They can be clipped over the downpipe and fixed into position with the screws provided. Note, to ensure adequate drainage, it is important that all round downpipes supplied are fitted. Trims and finishing. Clip the 70mm cover packers into the eaves beam at regular intervals. Select the eaves beam internal cover and position into the barbs on the eaves beam and press into place. Select the eaves beam 135 degree joint cover and press into place into the corner gaps between the eaves beam cover. Select the 135 degree corner post cover and push onto the leg of the post and slide upwards until the front meets the eaves beam. Position an 18mm coupling cover over the barbs on the inside of the post and push to fit. The 18mm coupling covers will need trimming to fit underneath the external eaves beam trim and eaves beam cover. Select the 18mm coupling covers and position onto the recesses of the sides of each quarter turn button on the 18mm inline couplings and push to fit. Repeat for each inline coupling and on the inside. Position the ridge internal cover beneath the serrated prongs of the aluminium ridge spacers. Push the internal ridge capping into position until it touches the bottom of the glazing bars on each side of the roof. The internal boss end cover may need trimming. Bring it up to the boss end so that the end cover will fit tight against the rear face of the end boss. Use the 3.9 by 25mm fixing screws and cup washer to fix the internal boss cover to the L bracket attached to the ridge assembly. Press the plastic screw cover in place. 
fit the handles to all opening sashes using the 5 by 20 mm handle screws. Attach the sill end caps at the door using a bead of silicone. Silicone between the sill and dwarf wall. 